Uh, it's good to have Brother John Stevens back with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give him a real hand. John's going through some real physical problems. Can you pray for him? But it's good to have him. Also good to have Amy Grace over here with us today. I, I'm going to say it, Amy. <laughs> but uh, good to see Amy. And continue to pray for Brother Ron and uh, uh, Ron Slack, if you would. As he deals with the physical problems he's going through. Let me ask you a question. I'll get my Bible here in a minute. I didn't leave it over here uh, just to be, uh, draw attention there. But I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you ever struggle with a matter of faith? How many of you ever struggle with a matter of faith? Raise your hand. That is a struggle among a lot of people. By the way, I have to include myself in that. I think all of us have a struggle, and we find that indicated also in Scripture. We look at people and we begin to name them. We say, boy, they really stepped out and did, did great things for God. But first of all, we have to get a definition of faith. And most of you know it. Faith is simply taking God at his word. Amen? Amen. Let's say it together. Faith is taking God at his word. Whatever God says is simply being obedient to what he says. Do you ever think about the people in the Bible that uh, we look upon that are, uh, we, we call them big shots in the Bible? And we think they never had problems. They never had a problem with the matter of faith. Well, think about Abraham. Was there ever a time in the life of Abraham, the man of faith, his, he, he was the father of faith, the Bible says. Did Abraham ever have a struggle with the matter of faith? He did. Let me illustrate. You remember that there was a famine in the land one time, as recorded in the book of Genesis. And God told uh, Abraham he would take care of him. He was going to multiply his seed as the stars of heaven. But Abraham did something that showed he did not have faith. What was it? He went down to Egypt to get his needs met. Now, there was a time when God used, and he, we see that as we move on in the book of Genesis, in the life of Joseph. Brother Ed talked about it this morning in Sunday school. God used Egypt to preserve the Jewish nation. Matter of fact, he took 70 of the Jewish people down into Egypt there. And uh, when uh, Joseph, of course, when he was 17, and then uh, 73 years later, Brother Ed, we, we look at uh, that chapter 36 of Genesis, and we see he's only 17, but 73 years later, that's the reason they couldn't recognize the brother. The brothers of Joseph couldn't recognize him. God used Egypt at that particular time because God chose to do it. But when Abraham was told to depend upon God, that he was going to multiply his seed, Abraham did something when there was a famine. He didn't listen to God. He went down to Egypt to have his needs met. Well, God literally had to thrust Abraham out of Egypt by the Pharaoh to get him back to the land of Canaan where he was going to bless him in a great and mighty way. You see, if we get ourselves in the wrong place, folks, God cannot bless us the way we should be blessed. Can I hear an amen? amen. And that's because we have a struggle with a matter of faith. Let me direct you to another illustration if you take your Bible and turn over to the book of Matthew and then we'll eventually make ourselves over to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. But if you turn over there to the book of Matthew chapter 8 very quickly, I want to show you something about another individual that we look upon as a great individual. And he was a great individual because God made him a great individual. But there was a time when he did not believe God. He did not take God at his word. Look here at chapter 8 and look down at verse number 23 if you would. And... Uh, We'll look at the other scripture I refer to the person I'm looking at. But if we were to look at some men by the name of the disciples. Disciples walked and talked with Jesus and they saw the great miracles that are performed by the Lord Jesus. Yet we find here an instance where, are you listening? 
they were struggling with a matter of faith. They did not trust the Lord the way they should. They did not take him at his word. Look at verse 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And that was a good thing. They were willing to follow him. But the Bible says, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. If you have Jesus around and you're trusting him, you don't have to worry about anything. Because he's going to take care of the problem. But look back here if you would. Verse 25. And his disciples came to him and woke him and saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Right off the bat, they were showing their lack of faith that the Lord was in control. Folks, I want to tell you, if you're in the boat and Jesus is there, you're safe. Amen. But look at the next verse in verse 26. It shows us that these men, these men that walked and talked with Jesus and saw, saw the mighty miracles that he performed, the Bible says this about them. And he saith unto them, read with me, why are ye what? Fearful, O ye of what? They were struggling with this matter of faith. Because they were not taking Jesus at his word. They were not dependent upon him. After all, he was the one that told them to get into the boat, didn't he? I want to tell you something, folks. If Jesus tells you to do something, you can do it. Amen. Come on, I want to hear a little bit more amen. Amen. If you and I are told by Jesus to do something, he's going to bring it to pass if we will simply step out and be obedient to what he tells us to do. And these disciples, yes, they followed him, but when he told them to get in the boat, that meant everything was going to be all right. He was going to take care of them. Hey, listen, the boat couldn't go down and drown Jesus because he still was going to go to the cross. Amen. You and I can take God at his word and know that he's going to bring it to pass. And it says, Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? They still had a struggle with the matter of faith. Uh, you're in chapter 8. Turn back to chapter 6 and look at verse number 30. God says he's going to take care of us. Now listen to this verse before I read this verse. Philippians chapter 4 tells us something very important in verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need. Come on, say it with me. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God's going to take care of you if you will be obedient to listen to what he says and do it. Now, look here, if you would, at verse 30 and read it out loud with me in Matthew chapter 6. Here we go. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Struggling with a matter of faith. All of us have that problem. The problem is we're just not taking God at his word. Uh, you're still in Matthew. Let's go over to chapter 14 now. Chapter 14, then look down at verse number 28 if you would. I want to bring it back to a personal individual, and his name is Peter. Now look up if you would. Peter was a great man of God. Don't undermine that. But Peter also was called one of the pillars of the faith. He was one of the major leaders of the disciples. And the Bible tells us that there was Peter, James, and John. They were the three pillars of the faith. If you were to take uh, an illustration here, Jesus had many disciples or followers of him. 
Matter of fact, in the book of 1 Corinthians, it, was, it talks about 70 disciples. Then we come down to the major core of the 12 disciples. Then we come to the three, Peter, James, and John. Then we have one specific one called John. Each one of those individuals walked and talked with Jesus, but if you were to go and look at each individual, you'll see that each one of them had a struggle. Even John had a struggle with a matter of faith. Now, does that excuse you and me to not have faith? The Bible tells us that we're to believe him. And the Bible shows us what we can do to have faith. And we're going to go to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews in just a minute. But there's a verse we all need to grip in our hearts and minds, and that's in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Would you listen to it? So then, faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the what? You see, God says the first thing that you and I need to do is to pay attention. And we'll get into that in just uh, a few minutes. But a lot of people have a struggle with this matter of faith simply because, and I'm not excluding myself, I have to constantly come back to this. That's one of the reasons for the message this week is believing God because sometimes we're shaken by the fact that we don't have our prayers answered immediately or maybe something comes into our life that kind of shake our faith. So we struggle. But God wants to correct that in your life and my life and get us going in the right direction. In the book of Luke chapter 17 verse 6, listen to it. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. How small is the mustard seed? Pretty small, huh? But when it grows, it grows into a large tree. God wants our faith to grow. He doesn't want it to stay at the same level. He wants it to explode. That we take and we grow in our faith. The Bible talks about, in the book of Romans, in that same chapter, chapter 10, he talks about our faith going from one level to another. From faith to faith. God doesn't want your faith to stay at one level. He wants you to take and keep on moving on. Well, you say, preacher, how can I do that? Are you listening? Every time that you and I listen to God and then step out to do what he tells us to do, though we might have our apprehensions, our faith goes to another level. So each time that you're believing God, you're, and then you respond by going ahead and doing it, then your faith begins to explode. It begins to go to that next level that God can do something in and through your life. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew 17. And verse 20, it says, And Jesus saith unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Faith makes things possible in your life and my life. But it takes that step of obedience to move on in our faith because we're taking and doing exactly what God tells us to do in our life. In his book, Six Hours, One Friday, Max Licato, how many of you have heard of Max Licato before? Lift your hand. Max Licato, though I may not agree with him in all the theological aspects, I believe the same way he does, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ to get saved. But Max Licato tells the story of how he and his boat survived a hurricane. Now, there's a lot of people that survived hurricanes just recently. But Max Licato tells in that book how an old seaman gave Max the advice to take his boat and to go out to deep water. 
Now, I don't understand this concept. If you guys are uh, familiar with, uh, you know, going out in the water and putting your anchors down and all that thing, uh, you might understand a little bit more. But uh, he was advised by this old seaman to take his boat and go out to the deep water to drop four anchors off each corner of the boat. That meant that he was going to drop 16 anchors off of that boat. And then pray that the anchors would hold. But did you notice what he said? Action, prayer. The story went on to give this information about Max's uh, experience in this hurricane. The Bible says, I mean, Max says that he survived the storm, but he says that he learned an important lesson all of you and I need to learn. And that is this, an anchor that will hold during the storms of life has to be anchored in the proper places. Are you with me? And then he goes on to say, that anchor is our faith. The anchor is our faith. And they want to say, what have you put your faith in? How important is it to have faith? Where do we find a faith strong enough to make it through the storms of life? Peter knows how important faith is, and he gives us a great picture of it in his own life when Jesus had to rebuke him here in the book of Matthew that he had such little faith. Yes, we may have little faith and we may struggle, but that doesn't mean that we have to stay at that level or stay at that place of unbelief. You see, God wants us to have the faith that will move mountains. So I want you to take your Bible and turn over to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. And when you get there, then we'll have a word of prayer. Hebrews chapter 11. All right, let's pray together. Father in heaven, I pray you would take the things that you shared with me this week that I share with these good folks this morning that may be struggling in their faith, that may have little faith, but they're progressing because little faith will do great things. And so I pray you take your word this morning and help us to be obedient unto you. Let us take the word of God at face value, and then step out and just do what you tell us to do. Lord, if there's somebody here this morning who's never been saved, may they just simply take what God says about how to get saved. I pray for that Christian that's struggling this morning and going through life and maybe they don't quite understand what's happening in regards to situations of their life. Things may not look so good right now. But I pray you would take your word and help us all to be obedient to it. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Look here in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I, I flipped too far. But look in chapter 11. You're familiar with the, what we call the, the definition that's given in the Bible. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't see the results of what God tells you to do immediately. That's because God wants you to step, take a step of faith. God wants you to act on that which he tells you to do. So the first thing is this. Faith is a substance. It means it's going to come to reality. It's going to be in your life. Then he says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Look at verse 3. Through faith. Now watch this. Faith is taking, in, taking God his word and stepping out. Right now, before you step out, you don't understand exactly what God is doing in your life. But he says, through faith, and after you let that faith be operative in your life, then the Bible says you'll understand. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So how can you deal with this matter of the struggle that's going on in your life in regards to faith? Number one, get it down. 
Faith will come when you listen to what God has to say. When you have an open ear to listen to what God has to say. For example, and I'll give you this because of time, I'll just give you the illustration. If you were to go back to the book of Joshua, chapter number 6, verses 1 through 5, God gave, God spoke to Joshua and the people and he said, here's the instructions I want you to do. I want you to go with the chief priests and all those and I want you to go and I want you to take, and guess what? Walk around that great city of Jericho. How many times I tell you, each day and so forth and so on, he gave the complete instructions. And then I want you to take and I want you to blow the horns and I want you to break the lamps, make a great noise, and the walls will fall down. Now, folks, they weren't going to go up to the walls and put their fingers against it, see how, you know, if it would move any or whatever it might be. God doesn't tell us to do something to check out in regards if God wants us to do it. God just wants us to go to find out the instructions. Huh? Are you getting what I'm saying here this morning? Amen. When God tells you to do something, it's not a suggestion. Amen. God may give you the instructions, but he says, this is what I want you to do. It's like the, um, the spies that went up to Canaan. God didn't suggest just to go up there and check out and see if they wanted to go in. He went up there so they could have, find out the instructions on when and how to go in. And that's the same way it is with your life and my life. If God says to do something... He wants us, simply, he might say, well, I want you to go over here, but he wants you to get the instructions on what to do. He wants you to go ahead and do the thing, but he may give you some instructions on what to do and how to do it. And so when God gave Joshua and the people the instructions on how to go up and to overtake the enemy, the great city of Jericho, they obeyed and did what God said. It looked foolish to them. Does God ever tell you to do something that seems to be foolish? Yeah, or unusual? Well, God wants you to say, this might not sound right, but God told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. See? Faith is being obedient and doing what God says for you and I to do. Amen. We're to listen to the instructions that God gives us. And if God gives you some instruction in the Bible to do, you and I are simply to say, Lord, I'm going to do it. Why? Because God said so. Amen. And the Bible says, now listen, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. In other words, it's God breathed, it's God spoken. And he says, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, he's not talking just about the preacher there. He's talking about every Christian. If you and I will take his spoken word, we'll never have a problem because he deals with four prophets for your life and my life. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for number one, doctrine. That means you will never get mixed up when it comes to right teaching. Amen. Reproof. You'll never say, God, why did this happen in my life? It may be God's reproving you. He may be rebuking you because of something that you've done in your life because he wants you to be right with him and he wants you to be right with other people. So the first thing that you and I need to do is to listen to God. For example, look at verse number four. By faith, Abel offered to God more, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now stop right there. Abel was taught by his parents what God told them to do in regards to sacrifice. He listened, but he also obeyed. But I want to ask you a question. Did Cain obey? 
Yes, no. He obeyed in that he took a sacrifice, but did he take the right sacrifice, folks? No. You know why? He wasn't listening to God. And secondly, he wanted to do things his way. Now, be honest with me. Don't you and I do the same thing sometimes? We wanted to do it our way rather than God's way. That's when it becomes that we're not listening to God. Are you listening? Recently, when we were in New Jersey, uh, we were showed, uh, if you go to YouTube, and it may still be on there. If you go to YouTube by uh, going, go to Google first, and then type in, listen, Linda, it will take you to a YouTube presentation. Have you seen it? That is the most comical thing in the world. Here's this little boy. Listen, Linda, listen. It's his mother he's talking to. We're just like that little kid. We want to tell God to listen to us instead of us listening to God. By the way, if you've if you got a computer, do that. You'll have a good laugh today. But it also teaches you something else. Do respect for parents just like do respect for God. Come on. Do you and I really respect God when we don't listen to him? We don't. We're thinking that we know things better than God. And that's why we have the struggle in our faith. We think that we can deal with the thing better than God can deal with it. And God says the first thing that's going to help you in your struggles in the matter of faith is we got to listen to God. He that hath ears, let him hear, see. And then let him be obedient to what God has to say. You see, it's our willingness to be silent and listen to God. Now, uh, let me give you another illustration real quickly. And I'll not have you go there, but if you go back to the book of 1 Samuel, in that scripture there, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, you'll find a young man by the name of Samuel. Samuel had been taken up to Shiloh, where the tabernacle was, where God had the tabernacle there to meet with uh, his priests and with the people. And Samuel, after he was uh, weaned, he was taken by his mother up there and presented to the Lord that he would, he would uh, be the Lord's all the days of his life when he grew up there. But Samuel, one night, heard a voice and said, Samuel, Samuel. And so he runs to Eli, the priest, and says, you do call for me? And the Eli says, I didn't call for you. And so this happened several times. So finally, Eli got his spiritual hearing open because he hadn't been listening to God because the word of God was silent in those days because it was rejected. It was put aside. Everybody was doing their own thing their own way. Even the priest, even the man of God was not listening to the Bible. I think we got some of that today too. Amen. And Eli finally called on that it was the Lord who was talking with him. I mean, you, you'd think he would have uh, realized it the first time, but he didn't. And finally he said, Samuel, he says, next time you hear the voice, be silent. And say, Lord, here am I. You know what our problem is sometime in our struggle of faith? We don't get silent before God. We don't get aside. We're in this hustle and bustle of life that we don't have time to listen to God. We listen to everybody else. We listen to everything else. But we don't listen to God. And God will speak to your heart. He will speak to your conscience. He'll speak to you most of all through the Word of God. Or maybe some other Christian who is parallel when he's thinking with the Word of God. So it takes your willingness to be silent. It takes time. We have our time so spread about with our own schedules that we don't take time to listen to God. 
When was the last time that you just got by yourself in your closet of prayer and you said, Lord, I just want you to talk with me. I want you to speak to my heart. And folks, I'm going to tell you what, he will. Now you won't hear an audible voice, but he'll speak to your heart. Amen. And God has a lot to say since you haven't heard him in such a long time. God wants us not only to take and get silent, but he wants us to take time and spend time with him. It takes open hearts. God having the full control over my will in my life. These words from Psalm chapter 90, uh, for example, if you go there, and I'm not going to go there this morning because of time. But in Psalm 95, he talks about this. You and I need to take and get silent before God. We need to spend time. And we need to say, Lord, I know I want to do it my way, but I believe your way is the best. I'm going to take, and I'm going to open up my will to you. Whatever you want for my life, I'll be willing to do it. So the first thing is that you and I need to take time and to listen to God. Secondly, look down at verse 7 through 9. And I've, I've got to move here very quickly. Faith will allow you to step out and do what you need to do. What you need to do. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. That actually goes back to the definition of verse 1. He didn't see the flood, but God said it's going to come. God gave him the warning. Noah's responsibility was to take God at his word and to do and be obedient to the instructions that he was going to give him. You see, Noah didn't have a Bible back in those days. He simply heard God speak. God wants you to get still so you can hear him. And faith will allow you to do what God wants you to do. Look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He went out, read the next two words with me. Not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. See, when you and I are willing to take God at his word, it will allow us to step out and do those things that we need and ought to do in our life. Some of you, you haven't stepped out and did what God wants you to do because you are not listening to God. You're not taking God at his word. There's a third thing. Look down at verse number 11, if you would. God's getting to the point now he's, going to, he's building you up. He's getting you to that place that that struggle you're going through, he wants to help you. Now, this is how he wants to do it. Look at verse 11. Through faith, also Sarah herself received what, folks? All right, now look up here if you would. When you and I are willing to listen to God, and we take that first step of faith, he'll give you the strength to do what you need to do. He will not leave you alone. I know we quote the verse quite often, but in Philippians chapter 4, there, in verse 13, the Bible says what? I can do, come on, I can do all things through Christ Jesus with strength me. In other words, if God tells you to do something, you can do it. Why? Because he gives you the strength. He gives you the sustenance. He gives you the supplies to do with. And verse 19 tells us that. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We, we're always thinking about that uh, refers to money or food. No, God many times gives you the courage to do what he wants you to do. God gives you the ability to do what he asks you to do. Uh, do you think Joshua had the ability to get those people motivated uh, to walk around that, uh, that great city of Jericho? Uh, you mean this great fortress? Now think about this if you would. That great fortress that those people had built around them, you could, ride, you could drive chariots on it. Matter of fact, two of them. 
side by side. God can do anything but fail. Amen. Let me give you another thing. Look down at verse 23 of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Faith will not only take and strengthen you, but faith will take away the fears in your life. Faith will take away the fears in your life. Look there at verse number 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not, what? Afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter. How did he refuse? He refused because of the fact God took the fear out of his life. Folks, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. If we will simply listen, step out by faith, let his strengthen us, that we are stepping out by faith and he's going to supply, he's going to help us, enable us to do what we ought to do. Very quickly, look down at verse 24, if you would, of, uh, of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Faith will enable us to make the right decision. Why? Because God will give you the understanding to do it. But look there, if you would, at, uh, at the verse. God says in verse 24, he says, By faith Moses, when he was come to the years, refused refuse to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. It will help you to make the right decisions. Uh, you see, we try to sit down and figure the whole thing out when God says, trust me. Amen. I've studied the thing out already from the beginning to the end. Everything's going to be all right. If you'll simply be obedient to me. And then look at verse 31, folks. Faith will keep us from perishing. Look at it. It says, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished what? Perished not. With them that believed not, when she received the spies with peace. Look back at verse 7 of the chapter. By faith, Noah warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, moved with, with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He had a godly fear, not a human fear. When you fear God, you're having a due respect for what God says that he knows better to, what to, for your life than what we know for our life. Amen. So I want to ask you a question. Are you struggling with this matter of faith? How many of you want to please God? Raise your hand. Amen. All right, real quickly before I close, look back at Hebrews chapter 11 and look down at verse number 5 and 6. By faith, Enoch was translated, he should not see death. It was not found because God translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. He's saying two things very quickly there for you and me in order to please God in your life and get out of the struggle of faith. The first thing is, look at it, verse number 6. He says, he that cometh to God. Have you come to God lately? First of all, have you ever come to God by personal faith and trusting Jesus Christ in your heart as your Savior? If you haven't, God says, I gave my son to die for you. Now simply come and ask me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to come to him. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Secondly, he says there, and that he is a rewarder. Now, when you get a reward, that means it's a good thing, right? I mean, it could be money. It could be other things that God gives you. But it says, for, uh, and that he is a reward of them that do what? Diligently seek him. Ask and it shall be given him. You. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened. There. And I, I, I don't know many of you know this, but let me repeat it again. Each of those words, seek, knock, 
so forth, or in what we call the active case of the verb, and it means keep on doing it. Keep on asking. Why? Because God has the best time schedule you could ever be on. Amen? He knows exactly what you need. It's, it's like a little kid that wants to drive when they're five years old. They're not mature enough. God may see some immaturity in your level of your life, and he wants your faith to grow. Amen. So he can bring you up to that level and then perform those things in your life. So this morning, are you a faith seeker or a faith struggler? God wants you to be a faith seeker. Amen? Amen. He wants you to get out of that struggle and come to Him and trust Him and be obedient to Him by stepping out because you've listened to His Word. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer, please? In just a few seconds, I'm going to have a word of prayer. I don't know what your need might be here this morning. I want to ask you, first of all, have you ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins? Have you put your faith and trust in Him that He's going to get you to heaven when you die? If you haven't, this morning is the morning that you need to do that. Some of you put it off. You put it off. Uh, let me say this to you this morning. God, everything that He asks you to do, He wants to reward you when you're willing to step out in taking Him at His word. And God will bless you for it. Let me ask you this morning. Do you want to grow in your faith? And God says, look, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God that tells you and I to be obedient unto that which we hear. Would you stand with his bowed and eyes closed? My Father in heaven, I come before you this morning. Help us in our struggles of faith that we would move on from one level to another. Yes, it's good to start with a mustard seed that's so small, but you don't want us to stay at that place. You want us to grow just like that mustard seed produces a great tree. And I pray that this morning, those that need to step out and take you at your word, that they'll do it this morning. That they'll not put it off, but they'll respond to the invitation and say, Lord, I'm going to do exactly what you're telling me to do because I know you're going to give me the strength. You're going to give me the supplies. You're going to give me that which I need to see, though I may not understand what you can do through my life. May thy will be done in this invitation. Well, thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Look up this way if you would. Doc, what are we singing this morning?